This is the weekly business news in English on TV3. I am Nukzar Rukhadze. How do you do? The Cabinet of Ministers is undergoing a big reshuffle. On the orders of Prime Minister Irakli Garibashvili, seven ministers have stepped down. Two of them are assumed to be transferred to other ministries in case the parliament gives them the vote of confidence. Till now, all members of the cabinet were staffed by former Premier Bidzina Ivanishvili. Hence, this is the first big change in the Georgian government. Now, let us scan the list of changes. Shalva Pipia, Minister of Agriculture, will be substituted by his deputy Otar Danelia. Instead of Sozar Subari, Georgi Mrebrishvili will head the Ministry of Penalty Enforcement, while Sozar Subari will substitute David Darachvelidze at the Ministry of Refugees and Resettlement. According to Konstantine Surgulaza, Minister of Diaspora, his resignation was the result of his and Prime Minister's joint consultations and the former minister intends to continue his career in the diplomatic service. Meanwhile, Gela Dumbadze will take his place. David Shavaliashvili, former head of the Department of Highways, will serve as the Minister of Infrastructure. El Guja Khokrishvili, Minister of Infrastructure, is assumed to take the place of Khatuna Gogoladze, the Minister of Environment and Natural Resor Resources. Mikhail Georgadze will substitute Guram Odisharia on the post of the Minister of Culture. The parliamentary minority labeled the ministerial reshuffle as a farce. Its members believe that these adjustments will not bring any changes to the country's development. The country faces such problems of great concern as growth of unemployment, escalation of poverty in general, budgetary washout and increase of criminal offenses. None of the ministers who is responsible for these failures was dismissed. All of them retained their posts. Members of parliamentary minority unanimously declare that changes in the government are cosmetic steps and that they will not support the new ministerial candidates. Contrary to the minority, the parliamentary majority expects to hear concrete plans from new ministerial candidates about the country's revival. They hope that the new ministers will be more successful than their predecessors. Today, the new cabinet of ministers will be presented to the plenary session of the parliament. The ministers need at least 76 votes to get the approval of the parliament. Hopefully, this is what we truly need at this particular time around. The Ministry of Agriculture acquainted the government of Georgia, the Georgian parliament, non-governmental organizations, international donor organizations and representatives of the diplomatic corps accredited in Georgia with the strategy of the country's development from 2014 to 2020. The presentation was arranged at the Hotel Sheraton Metehi Palace. Experts of the field, scientists and representatives of sectoral associations attended the event. However, the presentation went off without the presence of Minister Shalva Pipia because the event coincided with the decision of the Prime Minister to reshuffle the Cabinet of Ministers. As a result of the reorganization, the Minister of Agriculture had to step down from his post. According to Juan Echanove, representative of Euro Union in Georgia, during the last year and a half, a number of projects have been implemented in the country. Of course, it's not for the European Union to comment on the decisions by the government uh, regarding the members of the government. This is a sovereign decision of Georgia. I just want to highlight once again that we are extremely impressed with the good developments of the sector during the 18 months 
uh, before. I mean, during Mr. Pipia period, during Mr. Kirbalitsa period as well, which has no precedent compared with the situation uh, in the years before. The attaché of European Union expressed the hope that the new minister would retain old employees, former vision and previous policy because all these issues make up the commitments that have been undertaken by Georgia. Stay assured that Juan knows well what he is saying. By invitation of the chief prosecutor's office, a group of world-famous practical specialists of criminal law arrived in Tbilisi. The members of the group are former prosecutors who used to hold positions of influence in their respective countries. They have been conducting investigations of the most talked about court cases of former state employees, the so-called cause célèbre. Chief Prosecutor's Office already made up a consulting team from the invited specialists. The team is supposed to assist the investigation bodies in looking into the cases of former high-ranking officials. This move should make a lot of sense. The Minister of Justice acquainted the businessman with the bill on arbitration before sending it to the Parliament for examining and approving. According to Thea Tsulukiani, adopting of the law on arbitration is aimed at developing the institution of arbitration in Georgia and aligning the law on arbitration with international standards. The Minister of Economy and local businessman gave their personal evaluation to the bill on arbitration. First of all, I think the law will help unburden the city courts that are extremely overloaded. On the other hand, the business arguments should be settled by the judges of special competence in order to make the system of independent arbitration more effective. Minister of Justice Teatzo Lukiani believes that introduction of the new law will settle the business arguments smoothly. No more sweat, so to speak. Echo, bio, organic. As of August the 1st, these words will be written only on the labels of those products which are manufactured according to the corresponding requirements. Only those business operators who have received a special certification will be authorized to employ these markings. The products with such name or marked as ECHO or BIO that might have been supplied to the Georgian market will not be sold under this label if they are not properly licensed. Owners of supermarkets believe that after the said regulation comes into effect, choosing of ecologically clean product will become easier. According to the new regulations, in case the company lacks the appropriate license, it will be forbidden to use the words echo, bio, and organic next to their names. Therefore, the Echo Food Company, the enterprise that produces dairy products, plans to finish the rebranding process by August the 1st. Meanwhile, the company will continue its operations in the Georgian market under the name of Milko Food. Milko Food. At the same time, consumers think that the new law will make the products that are sold via distribution networks more trustworthy. Starting from August the 1st, the National Food Agency will begin checking of foodstuff and if it finds any contravention, it will find the offender companies. In the first instance, the wrongdoer will have to pay the fine of 400 lari, but if he commits the same offense during the period of one year, he will be fined 1,200 lari, which is 1,200 lari. 
in the judgment of experts if the regulation about the labels is controlled at the legislative level along with protecting the consumers rights it will encourage turning out of bioproducts on its part this will stimulate the development of bioproduction in the country and will support the entrepreneurs who supply bio and eco products the governmental decree will adjust the rules of labeling their produce with words bio, echo, and organic. Finally, we are getting there, folks. The American investment holding Conti Group intends to open its representative office in Georgia. Kurt Conti, president of the investment holding, conveyed this decision to the Georgian Prime Minister. At, this, at his meeting with Irakli Garibashvili, the head of the American holding voiced his intention to make investments in various spheres and take part in implementation of infrastructural projects, including processing of solid waste. It is already decided that in Belisi, Conti Group will build an American hospital of modern standards in which it will invest hundred million dollars. Presumably about 400 persons will be employed at the hospital. This sounds very serious. Good luck. According to Gia Gacicilazze, leader of the Party of Greens, Turkey has returned to the idea to dam the Mtkvari River at the Turkish-Georgian border. Gacicilazo claims that we received this information at the office of the Party of Greens of the Ardagan district, where Turkey plans to build a so-called Beshikkaya water reservoir cascade on the riverhead of the Mtkvari River. In the words of Gia Gacicilazo, in case the project is implemented, the volume in the Mtkvari River in the Akhaltsikhe district will decrease by 60%, in Borjomi by 40%, and in Tbilisi by 16 to 20%. This volume of water will not suffice to neutralize the sewerage that flows into the Mtkvari. From the economic point of view, this will also inflict great harm to East Georgia, which is irrigated by the water of the Mtkvari River. Therefore, Gia Gacicilazze appeals to the governments of Azerbaijan and Turkey, Euro Commission, Euro Parliament, and the relevant structures of the United Nations Organization to prevent implementation of the project of this kind, since besides causing ecologic and economic problems, the artificially created water deficit may also induce an interstate tension. This indeed is a problem which is asking for a very careful handling. Teymuraz Murghulia, Deputy Minister of Regional Development and Infrastructure and the Director of the Solid Waste Control Company, visited the rehabilitated trash dump in the Ozurgeti district of West Georgia. Starting from 2013, the Solid Waste Control Company provides rehabilitation work at the said trash dump. During this last year, the company succeeded to outfit the trash dump with necessary infrastructure. The rehabilitation of this trash dump is underway. It must be put in order once and for all, and then it should be laid up. This trash dump is located too close to the resort and recreation zone, which causes a lot of problems. According to Teimuras Murghulia, in the nearest future, the special project will be over. It envisages putting the trash dumps and solid waste processors in order which will allow us to build up a European system of trash dumps. The work to this end enhances protection of ecology. Trash handling continues to be a serious problem in this country. And by the way, our people's generic attitude to garbage as such is also questionable. The Municipal Development Fund of Georgia 
built a 24-meter-long automobile bridge in the village of Schritori in the Sachera district of West Georgia. Thanks to the new bridge, 113 villages of Sachere are connected to the district center. The old bridge was outdated and it was dangerous to cross it. The obsolete bridge had made local population disgruntled. The new bridge offers safe and comfortable passage to the residents of Sachere. This project of municipal development fund was financed by the state budget. The bridge will certainly make life easier in the villages. Construction of the new center of air traffic control began in Belisi. It aims to introduce the Euro control of organizations' infrastructure and furnish it with modern system and technologies that comply with international standards. Design of the building was done in 2010, but its construction was launched recently. It is scheduled to be over in two years. The cost of the project is $7 million. The ceremony of official beginning of construction work, where 200 persons will be employed, was attended by the Minister of Economy and Sustainable Development, Mayor of Tbilisi, and representatives of those international organizations who are working in the sphere of all embracing trade of the agreement on association with European Union. The air traffic, being as heavy as it is today, definitely needs our utmost attention. Four Georgian school children and their two instructors took part in the International Festival of Informatics in Taiwan. The aim of the competition was to promote informatics and share the relevant scientific and cultural experience with talented school children from different countries of the world. This year, Georgian team won one gold and two bronze medals and ranked the 17th among 82 teams from the countries world over. The truth is, that in Georgia, intellect and education are the most expensive national values. The first group of the 23rd Battalion of the 2nd Infantry Brigade returned to Georgia from Afghanistan. The 23rd Battalion of the 2nd Infantry Brigade has served at the base Leatherneck for four months. Deputy Minister of Defense, Deputy Chief of General Staff Iraq Ali Kegechkori, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the United States of America to Georgia, Richard Nolan, and Military Attaché of USA Colonel Matthew Dimick met 150 Georgian servicemen at the aerodrome of Aleksevka. They congratulated the Georgian servicemen with peaceful and safe return to the homeland and thanked them for successful fulfillment of ISAF mission. After the four-year-long service, the 23rd Battalion is the last Georgian subdivision which served under the Georgian flag in Helmand province within the framework of ISAF mission. Mission fulfilled, and this is good. That's all today. You are watching the weekly business news in English on Channel 3 of the Georgian Television. Thank you very much for being with us. I am Nugzar Ruhadze. We are taking a break in August to be back on the air in September. The air time remains the same, Saturday at 11 a.m. I wish you all to have a wonderful time in the summer. Many good cheers to you now.